feeling a little bit less prosperous than I was about 12 hours ago. But that's okay. At first I was reluctant to gamble. I figured it pretty much just amounts to surrendering a whole lot of my hard-earned money to a faceless, heartless entity with a very slim chance of coming out ahead. And then it occurred to me that that is pretty much exactly what paying taxes is, except with gambling you have a slim chance of coming out ahead. Now as I look out in the crowd here, I'm pretty sure that I recognize a few fellow revelers who were on the town last night with me, but rest assured, no worries, my lips are sealed. As I was told, what happens after hours at Right Online stays at Right Online. Now, that's a hell of a lot better than what they've got across the street. Their slogan is, what happens after hours at Netroots Nation gets published on the journal list. So I'm sure those secrets are completely secure. Uh, but seriously, it's awesome to be here in Vegas. It's my first trip to Las Vegas. And as Sin City can be kind of exciting, what I'm really stoked and amped about is being in the glorious home state of the esteemed majority leader of the United States Senate, Harry <laughs> Reid. Yeah, Harry Reid is so popular here in Nevada that his own son, who is running for governor, is omitting his last name from campaign literature. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> Some of you heard in that introduction, uh, I'm leaving my current position as a uh, Chicago-based talk show host, and I'm moving to Washington, D.C. to be the new political editor of townhall.com. I'm really excited about that opportunity, but I'm especially, thank you, uh, what I'm really especially eager to do, though, since I'm leaving Chicago, I'm eager to abandon the culture of corruption, the backroom deals, the profligate spending, and the nanny state is going to characterize Chicago politics, and as we all know, none of that type of stuff afflicts Washington, so I'm sure I'll be just fine, <laughs> particularly in this age of the most ethical and transparent White House and Congress in the history of man. Since I only have a few brief moments up here, I wanted to encourage you to visit not only townhall.com, but also our phenomenal sister site, site hotair.com. We heard from Ed Morrissey a few moments ago. He does a great job. I'm finishing up a project right now with my good friend Mary Catherine Hand. You may have seen her on Fox News and Lincoln Standard. She's great. So what our goal was when we set out on this project was to refocus the public's attention on that abomination of a health care bill that the Democrats ran through Congress five months ago. What we did is we went back into the record and we isolated eight of the central promises made by the President and his allies during their insufferable and dishonest PR campaign on behalf of Obamacare. And actually, we just heard a few of those eight central promises uh, recapitulated a few moments ago. The individual mandate is not a tax, they told us. They said it would reduce health care spending in America. Not so much. It won't add to the deficit. You can keep your plan if you like it. All that stuff. Then what we go through, I believe we convincingly demonstrate that each and every one of those eight promises is proven now to be either a ludicrously irresponsible promise or an outright lie. In Obamacare, we have a massive new entitlement program that the public did not and does not want that will not actually deliver on the benefits that its defenders said it would and, oh by the way, it will bankrupt the country. This is a monstrosity. It is built on lies, and it cries out for repeal. Now, talking about repealing Obamacare is an easy applause line for this audience, but it's, it's one thing to defeat the big government Democrats in November at the ballot box. But, and that is an essential step, don't get me wrong. But it will be equally important for us to hold Republicans accountable and insist that they live up to the limited government record that they have recently rediscovered. I'm glad they've rediscovered it. A lot of their votes have been heroic and excellent over the last couple of weeks. And I'm not worried about Mike Pence. I'm not worried about Michelle Bach. And we heard from them yesterday. I don't think you guys should worry either. Those guys are strong. But I think we all know there's probably a couple of Republicans in Congress who could use some friendly adult supervision. <laughs> so, as conservative activists and conservative members of the media, that will be our task. 
after the conservative tidal wave hits the shores of the Potomac this fall, as I believe it will. So please, log on to Hopper.com next week. Check out that Obamacare post. I think it will be compelling and impactful, and I hope that it goes viral, because the American people, they still know they don't like that bill. They don't like that law, but we'll remind them exactly why, and exactly why that righteous anger that so many people felt about a year ago should endure, and Democrats should pay when we go to the polling place. Now, I know my time is almost up, and if you'll excuse me, I actually have an appointment at the newest tourist attraction here in Las Vegas. I don't know if you've heard about it. It's called the Sith Man. It's actually at Al Gore's brand new massage parlor. So, I'm going to thank you all so much.